2000 and today I wanted to bring you guys another video on the a review of the ZWO AM5 mount well kind of review more some tips and tricks or pointers if you're using this thing or if you're thinking about switching over to this mount from say the Skywatcher EQR6 or the 5 uh, you might find this uh, pretty helpful so I've had this mount since uh, uh, February now and then a few months later I picked up another one because uh, I guess I really liked it um, but I was shooting with the Skywatcher EQR6 Pro for pretty much four years and that mount is fantastic um, I had no issues um, great guiding with it I collected some great images um, and leave it out all night and it never never gave me a problem the only problem was bringing the thing in in the morning and if we, if you own the Skywatcher UQR6 Pro, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not, um, it's not very light. It's not, you're not, you're not doing this with it. Um, that's for sure. Um, when I switched over to this mount, I also made the jump of shooting from uh, APT Astrophotography Tools for almost four years to the ASI Air. So almost in a way, I felt like a, a newbie again being out there uh, but the transition was very smooth um, that I'm really impressed with the ASI Air especially the autofocus um, I really have no complaints honestly I love it um, APT works great too I had some issues with the autofocus um, I eventually did get panned out but when I switched over to the ASI Air um, there was no issues uh, everything just work. There was no tuning. I didn't have to mess with the settings and the autofocus. First shot out, it autofocused. Uh, this setup, no issues. I uh, autofocused the Red Cat, no issues. And I also have the uh, RC6. It also autofocused with that, no issues. So making the switch over was pretty painless. The only thing that took me some getting used to was the polar alignment. Definitely way quicker with the EQR6 and the Pole Master. The controls on the EQR6 I like a little bit better too because you didn't have these locking mechanisms. It used two knobs and with the two knobs that kind of did lock it in place. This one you still have the two knobs but you also have these levers on, side, on the um, sides here and here. So every time you get your polar alignment close you're going to always throw it way off, uh, tighten that down. Pointer I do have though is I kind of tighten these down and I always tighten the uh, altitude up and that seems to make it a little bit easier. Um, honestly, I really don't even get my polar alignment that close uh, with this, maybe sometimes 15 seconds and then this one will be at 7 seconds and then they will both guide completely the same. One will have the red cat, one will have this setup. Uh, this setup weighs probably 24 pounds. I don't use the counterweight with it. It's, it's solid. This isn't going anywhere. Well, knock on wood, hopefully. And um, they will both guide around pretty much the same numbers, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, 0 0.34 is typically where they guide at. <clears throat> One issue I did have, well, I wouldn't really say issue, it's a user error. When I first uh, got this out with this scope on here and I did my calibration on the target, it was guiding great. And then I switched to another target and the guiding was uh, way off. So. When I broke the mount down at the end of the night and I touched the front to um, move the dew shield, the whole thing on the altitude moved. So if you have a heavier scope on here, you got to really make sure you tighten these, um, tighten these down, you know, good amount. I did get this uh, ZWO, the carbon fiber tripod. Uh, one thing I did do is I mounted a power strip on here. I zip tied it for my... Uh, power supplies, one for the mount and then one for the ASI Air. Um, I do have two USB ports in this power strip as well. Let me switch it around here and try to get a better view of it. It's just zip tied right to the leg. And then it's got some USBs in here for my radiator. If you saw my other video that runs the dew heater on that, and then I have another uh, camera that I run on this too that I can watch the scopes. Um, so what are the things that I change uh, that were pretty helpful for polar alignment is kind of old school here. So you see some people trying to use apps and stuff to align to the Polaris, but I just use a finder scope on the shoe on the side here and that works very well. So 
first night out, I set my scope up uh, and mount, got it polar aligned, and then I adjust the disc so the finder scope points to Polaris. So now when I set my mount outside, as I put it down, I can just look right through the finder scope, find Polaris, and I'm usually very close. Um, you know, I have to make minor adjustments to get to uh, polar aligned. Uh, the other main improvement that I made was I changed these feet. So you can notice the feet that I have on this tripod here. If you have this mount, you'll notice that they're not the ones that come on there. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below, but I did pick up these newer, did I say that right? I don't know, feet from Amazon, and they work really well. I did see um, some posts on the Facebook Z, um, AM5 site for some feet on there, but they're clicked on the link and they're really expensive, like uh, two, three hundred dollars for the pair. Anyway, so here's the feet that come on the tripod, and on the concrete, you could. Even on my floor here, you can grab this and it would push around. And it didn't feel like the tripod was very sturdy. But when I was looking at it, it wasn't the tripod that was moving. It was these feet just sliding ever so slightly. And then on the concrete, since the concrete in the uh, where I set my mount up, it's not perfectly smooth. It does have some little bit of divots in there. I could notice that this was sliding around a little bit. So I found these on Amazon and they, uh, they work really well. They, let me just show you here, get one of these unscrewed. I did unscrew one of these before, so it would come off for the video. And they're exactly the same as the spikes that come on here when you buy the mount. When you buy this mount, it comes with two sets of feet. It comes with the rubber feet that I just showed you, and then it comes with um, a spike set as well. Let me see. So here's the ones that I got from Amazon. They look just like the ones that come from uh, ZWO. They also unscrew on the bottom and they are also spikes as well. So, I mean, for, I think these were $17. It, it I, you know, not to sound silly, but kind of made me love the tripod. Uh, before that, it was like, wasn't, wasn't so sure. But um, this was the biggest improvement and one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video to show you guys was these little feet here because they, again, they're only $17 and um, they will take shape to whatever you set them down onto flat. Now, obviously I wouldn't use these in the grass. These would be more for, um, you know, if you set up on a smooth surface, uh, these are, you know, strongly recommend these in a gown. I'll leave you a link below in the description. Uh, this is also the case portability. Again, that was the, another reason that I decided to get this mount was I, I wanted to start getting out and shooting more at different places, not always at home. So now I can because I have the, it's so much lighter, such a smaller mount here in the tripod and I'm ready to go. I'm not lugging counterweights and this huge case that I had for the mount before. If you have a pier, or an observatory, um, I would say then you're probably might be better off with the Skywatcher, the EQ R6, uh, five, or any of the, uh, uh, the eight, the bigger one, because you're, if you're not have to break it down at the end of the night, it's cheaper. Um, I feel like it was definitely a little bit more sturdier in the wind than this, um, but I feel like the uh, pluses outweigh the minuses, so that's why I made the switch, and then, uh, you know, as you can see, I got another one. Um, this one I have the pier on it, extension. This one I don't, I didn't need it yet, but I probably will pick it up because then I could, don't have to worry about it. But it's kind of nice that I mentioned the pier extension does come with these holes right here and that's what I pretty much grab this and carry it by to uh, bring it out. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is that the two power supplies, I did get those on Amazon as well. I'll leave you links to those. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's supposed to be clear tonight, so I'm just getting set up. And before I brought out the second scope, I just wanted to give you guys some close-up video of the mount set up. So here's the one without the pier. Um, the red anodized finish on these just on the black looks sick. I know the looks don't affect it performance, but in this case, the mount has both looks and it performs absolutely amazing. 
Um, it's nice that you don't have to balance the setup, your setup when you bring it out uh, because the slightest imbalance I remember in my last setup would cause a night of not great guiding. Nice that you don't have to worry about this. So here's the adjustment knobs for the polar alignment. Um, these may look plastic, but everything is anodized aluminum. Here's the adjustment knobs. Everything's nice, very nicely machined. Quality mount. Here's the hand controller. I don't really use it because the controls in the app work very well. You need to put the mount in the correct position, say for flats. Uh, but the hand controller does, I of course tried it, it works fine. Uh, it has a Joy-Con much like a Nintendo 64 controller or a Switch, depending on your age. And you have to have this connected if you want to connect to the mount wirelessly from the ASI Air. So I figured there's not much of a difference of having, you know, this hanging down versus having one wire coming off the ASI Air to connect to the mount with a wire. So I have just this one on the air. I connect here, pull this off, plug it into the mount. And then there's the power wire here that I just leave hanging that I plug into these nice angle connectors into the ASI Air. That way, if they get caught on something, they just pull out. And they're sturdy enough to hold this cord in there all night. So just connect this wire in the front, power wire to the air, and this scope is ready to go. Just needs to be polar aligned, and then we're all set. Mount weighs only 12 pounds. We can handle a payload of 28 pounds without counterweights and 44 pounds with counterweights. So this setup here is 24 pounds. I don't use counterweights with it. When I put the scope in the Viridian position, it's very solid. There's no, doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over or anything like that. I think these feet really help. Here's the Raininator, little hero. Here's the case that I showed you guys inside. Okay, I just wanna show you guys uh, the app with the Sky Atlas, which is an unexpected surprise when I switched over to the air. And it absolutely is amazing uh, piece of software. So I'll show you guys the Sky Atlas. Let's take a jump inside that. So I have my phone and I wanted to show you guys the app. So let's go into the, that's right, telescope crap folder. And oh dang, C-Star, I just downloaded that from the Google Play Store. How many of you guys are getting the C-Star or pre-ordered it? Let me know down below in the comments. I ordered it back in April, right after I saw it at Neef. So hopefully I get it in a few weeks. When I do, I will definitely make a video uh, to show you guys how it is. And here we go. So the one the biggest thing that I love about this is these two red these two boxes here, the blue box and the red box. So the red box is where you want to go, your target, and the blue box is where your scope is pointed. Um, and depending on your focal length and your sensor size, that's what sets your field of view or the size of these boxes in here. And it's very helpful for framing, you know, whereas in the past I'd have to take multiple images and stack them to see if I was make sure I was collecting all that faint dust and nebula and now the sky atlas really helps with that it's during the day so a lot of the targets aren't out right now in the app for me to show you but at night like um I've been shooting the pac-man nebula so I can make sure I'm really picking up that faint tail that comes off the back of the nebula which is shown in the sky atlas and make sure i'm framing proper, properly to catch it all so it's really helpful with that um that's the biggest thing i love about the about the app is it's really helpful with the framing and your field of views the other thing on the uh you see which is on the right hand side here which are these directional arrows 
and those are to move the mount instead of using the hand controller. So as I mentioned when I was outside, I you, you can use the hand controller to put it, uh, move the mount, put it in position for flats. I don't. I just use these arrows on the right hand side here in the app, and they work fine. The touch on them is sensitive enough that you don't have to uh, worry about it. You know, you let your finger off, the mount stops moving, so it's not like it's going to keep going and crash into the pier or anything like that. So. Anyway, uh, it about wraps it up. I hope you guys found the video helpful if you're planning on getting the AM5 or helpful if you already have it. Um, uh, I'm going to show you guys some images that I took with the AM5. I haven't had that many, so I'm going to uh, show you guys what I collected so far.